Welcome guys to another episode of Tales of Middle Earth. As you know, I'm your channel host Adam and today I'm going to be here talking with you guys about an event that I went to a few weeks ago uh, that I haven't actually had a chance to chat about with everyone. Uh, it was a really cool event ran by the OHA, uh, so the Ontario Hobbit Adventures. Uh, and uh, so Jason and George uh, were the primary sort of organizers for the event, but they had help from other members from their side of the community. Uh, it was ran at Hot Lead, which is a, a convention that is held in, uh, I believe it's Stratford, Ontario. Um, and I wasn't originally going to be able to make the entire event, uh, but uh, due to circumstances and such, I was able to make it, and I'm quite thankful that I was. Uh, so first off, what is Hot Lead? Like I said, it's a little mini convention. Uh, you'll see like a lot of historical games are being played there so there's very few straightforward like uh, 40k tournaments uh, actually I don't think I've seen any straightforward like 40k tournaments or any of the big name games but there's a lot of historical stuff I think I saw some dust uh, there's obviously the Hobbit uh, and uh, a bunch of other things along those lines uh, I know somebody was running Blood Bowl there that was pretty fun actually, I did try that out one night uh, with uh, Dave uh, from the UK and so that was great, uh, we had a lot of fun with that one. Um, so three days, first day uh, I showed up, I drove down with Mike which you've seen running or helping me run uh, and play the uh, narrative that we've been doing for battle companies, Whispers in the North. So uh, Mike went up with him, stayed with him for the weekend which I'm super grateful for. Uh, he was great to allow me to carpool with him and to crash in his hotel room and stuff like that. That. So Mike, thank you very much. Um, but onwards from there, Friday night we showed up, we got ourselves settled in. As soon as we walked in, we met everybody because uh, we walked in through the doors that led into the restaurant by accident and George and a bunch of guys uh, were all hanging out at the, uh, at, the, at the kitchen or at the restaurant so we were eating dinner and stuff like that. So we walked in, said hi to everybody, went and dropped off our stuff. Uh, in our ho or checked in and dropped off our stuff in the hotel and then made sure we went and got our passes for the convention and then registered for uh, the War in the North scenario uh, tournament. So the tournament, how it was, was a two day tournament. You had one round on Friday night, uh, which was, I'm trying to remember what it was. George just sent it to me actually because I just asked him about it. Uh, so hold ground. Um, and then the other three scenarios were played for the tournament were played on Saturday. So Friday was the first round of the uh, tournament, and then Saturday was round uh, three, uh, two, three, four. Uh, so four rounds in total. Uh, the other scenarios were Seize the Prize, To the Death, and Contest of Champions. So with that said, it was a 750 point tournament. Um, and there really, if I can remember off the top of my head correctly, there weren't any limitations. And I say remember because this happened like three weeks ago. And then the weekend after I went to the Hot Lead, I went to Adepticon. And now I just got my computer back recently. Uh, and so now I'm starting to get back into the whole groove of uh, filming and such. Um, and so, yeah, it's... It's, uh, it's been a few weeks, but yeah, so 750 points. I don't believe there was any restrictions on what you could take. I don't think uh, either Jason or George could correct me with that. Um, so my list for that tournament, I, I have never had an opportunity to play Smog in a tournament because in uh, the OSBGL at the league events there, usually you'll see like a minimum four models uh, must be included in your tournament. And so like the only tournament that has had enough points where you could do that is the uh, Desolation of Ottawa that I ran last year with Taylor, um, where it was a thousand points and really there was no restrictions on what you want, to, what you could bring. We just want to be stay true to how the game was written uh, and we used the scenarios from, uh, from the GT last year as well. So like that was the only time and I was running it so I couldn't even play. So when I saw the 750 points for, for I think it was War in the North that they called it, uh, the event at uh, Hot Lead. Uh, uh, I was super ecstatic to bring Mr. Smog up there, uh, and then I had 50 points left over to play with, so I was debating. I'm like, do I just take Smog and, and drop the 50 points, or do I play with something else that adds 50 points in there? So I decided to go with a Barrow White, just purely on the fact that uh, I wanted to have that little bit of extra magic just to paralyze any major heroes that might get into combat with Smog, if it were to happen. Um, so before the tournament took place, nobody knew what the scenarios were, at least I wasn't aware of what the scenarios were. Maybe I missed it somewhere. Meh, who knows? Um, so I didn't know 
that they had three very combat heavy scenarios um, and not a lot of objective scenarios. Like there's only really one objective scenario uh, for this tournament, uh, and that was the hold the ground. Which really there's only one objective to hold, but is whoever has the most models within I think like six inches of that objective scores the most victory points. Um, and they were the balance like 12 victory points per. Uh, so it was good. Um, so I had fun. Uh, my first opponent uh, was uh, Zach actually, uh, who lives not that far from me. Uh, haven't seen him around that much. Uh, he's been busy with his life and stuff like that. Um, but uh, Zach ended up bringing uh, Dern's Folk. And so I had, uh, we were placed on the Osgiliath style uh, table uh, from, uh, and uh, it was a whole bunch of, Sorry, not the Osgiliath style table, that was beside us. We were placed on uh, a sort of like a field table with like some old ancient ruins in the center and stuff like that where the objective was. So I was able to, in round one, kill 13 dwarves with a flame breath because it was uh, the Maelstorm style uh, deployment and he, and uh, Zach had all his guys come in on the very same side uh, of the board. So he had them all bunched in together and so I was able to get like 13 models killed in round one uh, of his dwarves. And so that sort of set the tone and then eventually Zach was uh, smart and he hit his hero from me because he knew that if he could get more guys within the the center of the board and I broke him, he was gonna win unless I could kill his hero and have him broken and not be broken because like you couldn't break me unless you killed everybody. Uh, so he did end up killing the Barrel White. So Barrel White was useless that game, uh, no surprise. Uh, but I ended up breaking him and I couldn't get to his hero to get the victory points for the win. So I had a loss there. Uh, but it was really fun. It was really cool seeing the board. Uh, uh, George and Jason both have done exquisite work on their tables. You've probably seen pictures already of the stuff that they've been building. It is phenomenal. Uh, had a blast uh, playing on it. Uh, and Zach was a great opponent. So uh, cheers, Zach, for a good round. Uh, sorry for killing 13 dwarves. Not sorry. Nah. Uh, had fun nonetheless. Round two um, was seize the prize and I was playing uh, trying to remember his name now Cody I believe it was Cody uh, he came up from the States to play um, and so seize the prize he, again he was dwarves so he had Floyd uh, who else did he have I can't remember who else he had but he had a whole bunch of like Hazard Guard and, and everything else uh, and so a couple of Vault Warden teams if I can remember correctly as well but yeah, I ended up playing like three dwarven factions, which is funny as heck, um, and I didn't expect that. I thought I would, uh, you know, face some other factions. But uh, actually, b before I talk about my second round, I should note that this tournament was strictly good versus evil. So it was a team tournament. So it wasn't like uh, I'm going to win top place. It was our team was going to win over the other. So I was on team evil, obviously with Smog um, and Dave from the UK. He had his Easter so that was pretty good uh, and we had some other evil players we had Mike with his uh, Nazgul and the Necromancer and uh, we had another player Ronan who had uh, all nine of the uh, mounted ring race and when I say mounted they were mounted on horses uh, so that was cool they were the unnamed ones uh, only so uh, which was good so yeah, back to round two, uh, up against Cody and Dern's folk again, and it was seized the prize. So I was able to get the prize round, well, get to the prize, I should say, round one, uh, and be in base contact with it with Smog. Barrow White, again, did nothing this game, ended up dying to some dwarf that was trying to come around behind Smog and, and attack him. Um, so Barrow White tried stopping him and ended up dying. Uh, it took Smog, I think, three or four turns to try to dig up the, the prize. Once he did, he just ended up flying around into gaps where I could place him and then, you know, shooting his flame breath on guys and stuff like that. I think by the end of the game, I did manage to to uh, break my opponent and I did have Smog on their side of the board uh, at the end of the game but I didn't get him off because I was uh, trying to kill his hero and doing other things along those lines. Uh, Cody was a really good sport actually about it. Uh, I don't think he was too keen on playing Smog. I don't think there's too many players in the league in like the OSBGL that have faced Smog. So for me, 
it's cool as a player because like smog is one of those things that you don't get to see all the time over here so I thought it would be cool to play them and cool to bring them because people could see them and, and, and it'd bring that limelight in so I think Cody was sort of uh, uh, weary of playing him uh, but uh, a grand, great opponent had fun um, and he played really smart because he was making sure that his guys had the two inch gap away from uh, the person that I targeted uh, with the flame breath stuff like that so a really good player really fun to play against uh, up next on Saturday was uh, what was it to the death to the death, and I ended up playing uh, Thorns Company. Not Champions of Erebor, but regular Thorns Company. I was kind of dreading this match in some sense, because if anybody had the possibility to just kill Smog, I would assume that Thorns Company would um, when it came to having all the might points to call the extra heroic strikes, stuff like that. Um, but my opponent actually ended up failing some of his courage tests, some of his key courage tests. My Barrel White did uh, paralyze Thorn, which was good, but eventually Thorn came back in um, into the combat and was slayed uh, by Smog. Um, and then after the Barrel White uh, paralyzed Thorn, he held off uh, Dwalin for a round as well, because like he's the big beefy guy, right? You don't want him getting into combat with Smog, because he's, you know, he's going to wound him easier than the other models. So... Uh, so my opponent's mindset was that uh, he was going to lose that match automatically right from the beginning. It was a very thematic match, but he was going to lose it, and uh, I don't think he was too keen on that. Um, and so, like, my very first flame breath, I ended up taking, or wounding uh, one of the dwarves. Uh, it was either Keely or Feely, I believe. And uh, he was just going to scoop him off the board and leave it at that. And I'm like, dude, you have fate. Use it. You know what I mean? You still can win. You just have to get in on me. Um, and of course, I'm trying to keep Smog back because that's the best thing to do for him. Um, but all in all, he was a great opponent to play. Uh, I did have fun. Uh, Smog did come out with the, the win on that uh, scenario. So uh, to the death. And uh, it was uh, really, really good. Um, we were playing on a Moria style board. And the second board that we were playing on, I should add as well when I was up again, Cody uh, was like a Oskilia style board. One of the original ones that uh, I think George shared uh, the one with the big walkway down the center of it and stuff like that. So it was it was pretty pretty cool. Um, so up next, the last round for the War in the North or War of the Ring tournament was Contest of Champions. Uh, I went up against Derek from the OSBGL. Uh, cheers, Derek, for a great game. You had me on the toes. Uh, his Eagles and Treebeard and Radagast on Eagle. Gladriel, Lady of Light, and Gone Barry Gone, which Gone Barry Gone was his general, though, unfortunately, throughout the tournament. So, Gone Barry Gone faced Smog. <laughs> and, but smart for Derek, he placed him in a position where I couldn't actually charge him uh, because I couldn't get my base in on him. Uh, so, instead, I had to deal with another threat or potential threat. Um, so, I immobilized uh, Radagast on Slay, or sorry, compelled Radagast on, on, not Slay, on Eagle, pushed him back to make space to charge a, a single Wozes model, and Treebeard was off to the side um, and out of threat range, uh, and so I killed that Wozes with a barge, and then barged into Galadriel, Lady of Light, so I sort of took her out, like, very early, I think it was like round one or, uh, or so. So it was fun, really, really good. Um, once Derek got in with the Eagles, and more importantly, Treebeard, that's where the damage started to come on to Smog the most out of the entire tournament. Um, Derek, uh, with his Treebeard, was wounding left, right, and center. And eagle, even the Eagles that he had were uh, doing the damage that they could, you know what I mean? So uh, it, was, it was good uh, for Derek. Uh, I ended up coming out with a victory as well. So uh, for the entirety of that tournament, I went uh, three uh, wins, one loss. And the loss was just due to the fact uh, that uh, Zach had more guys near the objective at the end of the game. Um, and I think at the end of the game, he had like six or seven models left to my smog. Um, and I know, and like one of them being his general, which if I could have killed his general, I still would have had more points than him because uh, I would have been broken or would have broken him without being broken myself. And then I would have had his uh, general kill, which gave, would have gave me like uh, six points. And I think he had five at the end of that one, I think. Uh, so it was really good. Had a fun time. George and Jason did a lot of work uh, uh, to put on this event. They put in some great stuff into the terrain, as uh, they both do. Like it's phenomenal the stuff that they had set up for it, uh, which you'll see in some pictures momentarily. Um, 
So yeah, it was a lot of fun. Uh, I definitely would go back to another uh, one of their events uh, sometime in the near future, uh, which I think they have one in September. I'm not sure if I can go into that one yet, just due to work uh, commitments, stuff like that. Well, not even knowing what my commitments are to work yet, because I don't have my schedule that far yet into the future. Um, but if I can, I would, and I'd suggest anybody else going out to them too, just because of the terrain. You got to see the terrain, because like you see pictures on Facebook that George and Jason have shared of their terrain that George has made and uh, that Jason has made um, and it's great to look at but it's even better in person and to play on it I wish I had time to get some more games in I really want to do a battle on uh, on the Rivendell board uh, that was one board that I did love uh, to see and, and to play on so uh, it would have been great to actually get that in uh, but I didn't manage to get that in so I just played on the field one with the big runes in the center you'll see pictures of it uh, Osgiliath style board uh, a Moria style board for round three and then round four was just like an open sort of forested sort of area um, so yeah that was that for the tournament three and one evil ended up losing to good so good prevailed uh, surprise surprise but good had some really good players on their side so they had uh, Joseph they had Ben they had Don Garrett uh, from the league, they had Andrew Brock, um, which Joe and Ben tend to play good anyways. Andrew, he played good uh, instead of uh, Evil. I think he was Minas Tirith. So a lot of people, it was more about the theme. Um, so some of the words that they were giving out, obviously, to the winners of the team, they got their medals and, and, and whatnot, uh, but they were doing, I think it was like the best theme. Uh, for their, for their, the best painted, best theme, stuff like that for awards as well. Mine wasn't themey at all, just because I threw in the barrel white and it was the extra 50 points I had just to fill up the thing. But, looking back on it, hindsight, I probably really didn't need to use them because the barrel white didn't really do all that much. So, uh, going into Sunday. Sunday was the Siege of Edoras. Uh, they set up a big board uh, on Sunday for people. I didn't actually partake in that, but I took a bunch of pictures, which I'll show you momentarily. Um, and all it was was Urukai uh, charging into Edoras and, uh, and storming the gates. Uh, so the good team had, uh, obviously the three hunters had some, uh, had uh, Haldir and his elves, and then it had a bunch of different Rohan. So it had uh, the mounted as well well as guys on the wall um, and then so the field was set up with trees and hills on the evil side going into Edoras which was a big giant wall and then some houses and that behind it so it was a fantastic sight to see but don't just take my word for it check out the videos now
Well, what did you guys think of those pictures? Uh, hopefully you enjoyed the sights of them. Uh, I had a blast uh, hanging out with everybody um, both Saturday and Sunday night. That's some of the best things that you can do at a community event, you know what I mean? Like, uh, it is a community. And for me, it's about helping grow that community, help support that community as much as I can. Um, and like it's the hangouts, like uh, like every night that we were there. So Friday and Saturday night, you know, we were out hanging out with Jason and all the rest of the guys that were hanging out there. Dave, uh, everybody, you know, we all got together. We had a few drinks. Uh, it happened to be St. Patty's Day as well, so that was fun. Um, and it was it was just a good time. I enjoyed it. Even afterwards, after the tournament was done, we didn't leave right away. You know, everybody hung out, chatted, and then uh, relaxed for a little bit. And then Sunday, everybody got together hung out all day again uh, it was fantastic a fantastic time um, but yeah it was a great event I hope uh, that this is enticing people to show up next year to Hot Lead uh, 2019 um, the event itself Hot Lead had some great vendors there you could purchase some stuff you could jump in on other games and other systems if you wanted to uh, and then obviously the the sort of a creme de la creme for me was the OHA event uh, War, of, War of the Ring as well as the Siege of Edoras which again I didn't participate in because I just wanted to sort of do some photos and let other people uh, from around the convention jump in because it was limited space so I just wanted to give them the opportunity to play. Uh, all in all I think everybody had fun. Uh, George, Jason, guys from the OHA thank you for putting on the event it was well well done. Everybody else, thank you for watching. Please uh, check out the Patreon link below. Uh, we definitely appreciate any support that you guys can give us because it allows us to do the content that we do and continue to grow the way we are growing. Again, please remember to like, share, and subscribe. Until next time, ignite your hobby.